Hello! It's been a while since the last video, so here's what's new since then. I've refreshed the website's main page, thanks to Maxer for creating a new logo. Website is also available in Polish language. Main page displays server status, with the current mission being played and the number of players. Same information you'll find in the game's main menu under the game schedule option. Thanks to Retro from OFPIsNotDead.com for providing an API for querying servers. I've added pages that list all servers and all mods. They have their own RSS feeds, but you can also subscribe to an individual server or mod. It's now easier to set up a server record, paste IP of a live server, or pick one from the master list, and the website will copy server information to the form. Dropping config files on the marked field will fill certain fields as well. Server will be permanently displayed on the server list if you enable the Persistent Server option. This can also be done from the Schedule page by clicking on the Disable button. For recurring events, you can now set up vacation time. I've also improved the section for assigning mods to a server. Order of the mods can be easily changed and the launch parameter is shown. In the Mod Details section, I've added a bunch of options. You can assign a website address, select the required game version, write previous mod name, if you renamed it, to keep the installation working, set up a password to make your mod private, indicate if a mod is meant for multiplayer or not, and finally, add a logo. I've added a new category of mods called Tools, which is meant for mission-making tools. I'll talk more about it in another video. On the Mod Information page, Markdown can be used for description and changelog. Installation Preview now features code highlighting. Holding the cursor over a line will show you what it's doing. Command name links to the documentation. I've also added an option to preview installation from a later version. Page for setting up mod installation has been simplified, with two subsections instead of four. Many convert download links handles more websites. You can now preview changes before submitting. In the section for adding jumps, I've added the option Always jump to the newest, to make the process more convenient when you have a single archive. Read more about updating mods in the documentation. In the game's main menu, Option Mods has received a number of improvements. You can now download new mods from here. Select Option Download Mods, and a list will appear. Click on a name to reveal more information. Double-click to download it. Hold Shift if you want to install more than one. Use the Search option to look for a particular mod, or filter them by category. To reveal hidden mods, select Show Private Mods and then type in password. Now back to the list of your own mods. On the bottom there's an option to add a shortcut so that you can easily launch multiple mods, optionally with custom parameters.
last item, visit website, will take you to a separate web page where you can read more about the mods menu. If you've installed FWatch with Anium's PVO replacement, then you'll be notified about mod updates and the number of active players when you launch the game. If you're looking for something to quickly try out in single player, then check out Shock Demo by Lenyoga. Welcome to Milsim 9. Car Wars by Hitcher. Or Top One by Gaia. FWatch extends mod folder functionality further. Mods can now contain island cutscenes, which used to go to the add-ons before, missions for the mission editor, templates for the mission wizard, and a custom face texture. If a mod uses a custom head model, you don't have to replace your own texture anymore, because FWatch will do that for you. Programs Game Restart and Addom Installer show progress in their own windows, so that you can track it from the desktop. Installation can now be paused. If a download or unpacking fails, you'll be asked to retry or abort. Interrupted downloads will be continued. Install a backups file so that if you abort the installation, all changes will be reverted. Automatic installation algorithm was greatly improved. For example, it will recognize mission type, SP or MP, and move it to the appropriate folder. You can read more about its rules in the documentation. I've also added a new command, merge with, to make auto installer merge a different mod folder with the current one. Installer keeps consistent file modification dates. This is important for the check files feature on the dedicated server. Dates can also be modified manually using the file date command. Installer now features a graphical interface for testing installation scripts. I'll talk more about it in another video. Game schedule menu now loads faster. Automatic connection has been remade and now uses Windows Task Scheduler. I'll talk more about it in another video. When you're connecting to a server and your custom files exceed the server limit, they will be automatically disabled. Lastly, the in-game menus are also available in Polish language. That's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.